if you're a risk taker and you like dogs, have I got a proposition for you? Would you like a radioactive puppy? Huh? <laughs> okay, oh, here's oh. the story. <laughs> so, um, Chernobyl, this, there, there, there was a massive nuclear disaster right. in 1986. And after that area, after that time, that whole area was cleared out. It's kind of frozen in time and it's dangerous. People have been able to go in to uh, the general area and it's generally thought of as not safe for humans at all, right. thanks to all of the radio radiation that's still in the area. Mm. However, some dogs were there uh, when the, the nuclear meltdown happened, mm. and they became wild dogs. Mm. They breeded with wolves, and now, generations later, their puppies can come home in the United States. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that... It, it, listen, I've seen the pictures of the puppies. They're like, very cute. They're adorable. But you're not going to tell me that a couple of generations have passed with these dogs and now there's nothing lying dormant within their genes. That is terrifying to hear mm -hmm. that I could potentially get a puppy and next thing I know, my electricity in the house doesn't work. But my dog is just sitting around messing up the TV, the internet, and everything. <laughs> like, I don't... <laughs> Cause, uh, dogs can do that that aren't radioactive. Yeah, but these really will. Like, I already get bad Wi-Fi in my house. Like, I don't need my dog messing up my signal. And so it's, yeah, like you said, it's a risk. Because, yeah, they've said they were, they had them for like 45 days or so. They made sure they were clear to mm -hmm. be able to be taken home. But it's like, again, even though something has gone generations, what's li what lies in your genetic code is still there. It may remain dormant. Something may bring it out. And it's just that fear for me personally. Like mm -hmm. I would give it as a pet to someone who you wanna you wanna bungee jump, you wanna do naked and afraid, here take this puppy. Like <laughs> that's how I feel like I should give it to him because I personally couldn't. I don't think I could mentally be able to handle that, you know, that risk. Mm. Well, I mean, it seems like the people who are working to get them adopted, there's a 2017 short film that we did talk about in earlier called The Puppies of Chernobyl, and it did bring up awareness of the plight of the animals, which is they're kind of on their own. Maybe they need, you know, someone to help them. A shelter would be, you know, best. I understand you want to give animals a loving home. I, I, I definitely do. But the risk behind that, Mm -hmm. That's that's the risk behind anything. Like you said, it's barely able for human presence to be in the Chernobyl area. Yeah. Even for those who were affected, their generations mm -hmm. later, just like we're talking about the puppies of people. So it applies both ways. It's just the unnervingness of it, if you will. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not something you're just going to forget, probably. No. The puppies will be treated for radioactive poisoning before they are sent to new homes. Right now, it looks like there are 12 puppies available, but... Yeah, there will be more in the future if things turn out all right. We could call this the beta test or the alpha test. Or the Resident Evil test. Or, you know, an adorable, horrible future <laughs> like in Resident Evil, but cute. It could go both ways, but I think it'll be, I think it'll end up being okay. It has potential. Maybe. I mean, it has potential, but we just don't know I just, now. I want the dogs to have homes, and they're so cute. Maybe I'm being too forgiving. Audience, mm. am I being too forgiving? Is it dangerous to have a dog that has been in Chernobyl for its whole life. Please let us know your thoughts on Facebook and Twitter.